Item two, public hearings A, to consider establishment of two additional satellite absentee voting locations. Ms. Hargrove. Good evening. Um, so we are here to establish the two additional um, polling locations. There were three public comments that I received in reference to um, the satellite locations. However, I have been asked to give you guys a brief update on the election. Is this a good time to do that? Or do you want to wait until after the um, public hearing? Uh, Ms. Hargrove, I think tonight, I think uh, right now will be just fine. Thank you. Okay, so I think with my update, I will um, actually address some of the questions or concerns that the citizens had um, in reference to a lot of different things. Um, so, but first and foremost, I would um, be re remiss if I didn't at least recognize um, the efforts and all the assistance that I've had throughout the last few months preparing for um, not just November, but the June election. Um, I've had redeployed um, employees helping me out, especially from the fifth floor, Claire and Kim, um, Joy and Tracy. I've had individuals from Parks and Recreation. Um, Tamara Highsmith has been great. Kevin Bruni has helped me out. Um, not to mention that Matt has had to um, put up with with a lot of me telling him I need five people and then the next day I tell him I need 10 people. And so everyone has pulled together and assisted my office. Either they would come over to my office to work on things that I couldn't release outside of my office or they would take items that they could like stuff voter cards to their office and do those for me and get them back to me. I still have um, one of Jeff Minx's um, employees in my office. She's been here since June as a redeployed worker. Um, and just to name a few of the departments that I've actually um, worked with very closely over the last few months and even a um, couple of weeks, of course, printing services, communications and media, human resources, the library, of course, um, general services, clay bowls especially, IST, Barry Condry and I have been come, become very close. Um, Jennifer Reynolds from Risk Management, she's actually come to my um, training classes and train officers on how to properly use their um, personal protective equipment. The Learning and Performance Center, um, they're assisting me with making sure that I can get all of the officers of elections trained online, um, those that will not be trained in person. And um, just a, a conjury of individuals who've come over to assist me and actually gone back to their departments and say, hey, they need more help over there. And their supervisors have voluntarily just provided um, additional support to my office. So I just really want to say thank you to, um, to the board, um, especially to the board and to the administration and to every department that has um, pitched in. And um, hopefully that help continues to keep coming because we are not done yet. Oh, not to mention the school's um, mail room um, also um, is involved in all that we do. So, so let me just kind of jump in to um, give you guys an idea of where we are with this election. It is um, a very unique election, um, not just because of COVID-19. It is unique because it seems like the laws never stop changing. So daily, um, there are changes to what it is we are expected to do in this office to make sure this election happens and that everybody is served. Um, so of course, um, there is a law that states that we have to train all officers of elections anytime there is a law change. Um, so of course, all of the officers that we recruit and those that are already um, officers of elections will have to be trained prior to the November election. And uh, we are preparing for that. We can't train them yet because we have to wait for the General Assembly to um, pass their bills and the governor to sign in order for us to make sure that we are providing all the information that the officers need to work on election day. And I believe that was one of the concerns of one of the citizens um, I believe Brenda Jenkins, 
who was concerned that we were recruiting officers too late and that um, they would not be able to be trained. That is not the case. We are um, right on time recruiting officers of elections and there is ample time to train them. So we will get them all trained prior to the election on November the 3rd. The um, second thing that is affecting this election is, of course, no excuse absentee voting, um, which is confusing everyone. Um, the state has started calling the in-person portion of um, absentee voting early voting, but it is still absentee voting. The only change is that voters will not have to submit an application and they do not have to have a reason to vote absentee. Um, that's the in-person portion. If they are voting by mail, they still need to submit an application. They just do not have to provide a reason. So it is all absentee voting, um, even though individuals are calling a portion of it early voting. So the part that is in person, they are referring to as early voting. The um, part where they're requesting a ballot in the mail, they're referring to as vote by mail um, voting. The um, third law that has already been passed is that we have to receive late ballots um, after the election. So any ballot that is postmarked by election day that we receive in our office, we have to count uh, up until Friday noon. They have until Friday noon to get those ballots into our office. If they mail them, we have to count all of those ballots. Um, before we certify the election. So that's a, a, a little bit of a different spin on election day. Um, it's now election week. So it's no longer the election is over um, at 7 p.m. on election night. So those are changes. Um, the other thing I just wanna bring to your attention, um, I had to report to the State Board of Elections earlier this year on any polling place that had more than 4,000 registered voters. So I um, provided them information on the, the polling places and how um, Chesterfield County intends to address um, voters on election day for those polling places. So I'll give you some of that information. Um, so we do have seven precincts that have over 5,000 registered voters. <clears throat> there are um, three in the um, Bermuda District, um, two in Matoaca. There is one in Clover Hill and one in Melothian. So these polling places all have more than 5,000 registered voters. Um, now you can pause me anywhere you want to if you feel like you have a question in the middle of where I'm going. <clears throat> so the way that I am proposing to address these um, polling places. The law requires that any precinct that has more than 5,000 registered voters in a presidential election have two scanners on election day. So I am definitely sending two scanners to all of those polling places. So the polling places that have more than 5,000 registered voters will receive two scanners and they will receive six electronic poll books. Those that have um, 3,700 to 5,000 registered voters, it's 19 of those polling places. They will also receive two scanners and they will receive five poll books. The next category is uh, we have 23 polling places. Um, that goes up to, of course, 3,699 down to 2,600. Um, they will receive one scanner and four electronic poll books. And then the smaller polling places, that 31 of those, they all will receive one scanner, but they will receive three poll books. Now, in any of these polling places, they may not use all of their poll books, but I am providing them in the event that they do get that rush and they need to um, put them all into play. What I've done to provide for social distancing is to remove the ballot officer. So each polling place prior to this election would have a poll book officer, and then next to that poll book officer would be a ballot officer. So if the precinct uh, polling place had three 
poll books, they would also have three poll book officers. To allow for social distancing, I'm removing those um, ballot officers. So the poll book officer will be at a table by themselves and that will allow them to space themselves out so they're not sitting right on top of each other. Um, any questions about that? Okay. Board members, any questions? Um, I just, I would like to know which specific um, polling places of Matoka, sure. uh, the city that you're referring to. Sure. So um, I think, and most people are aware that um, the um, Ettrick Precinct, Precinct 301, is, is one of our larger polling precincts because it has a, a large student population. So um, Precinct 301 actually has 6,268 registered voters. And then Precinct 307, and I need to have my, my list in front of me, which I don't. Precinct 307 has 5,845, and that is Cosby. 307 is Cosby. Okay, well, unless the Virginia State University brings the students back, we should be okay down there because uh, right now they're virtual learning only. Absolutely. Um, and the the law provides that if at any time any of these polling places have more than 4,000 voters in a presidential election, then we have to split them. But with the no excuse absentee voting, I really don't see that happening for this election. So we, we have a little bit of time to to figure out um, what to do with those polling places in the future. So um, I have on hand 129 um, scanners. I'm actually deploying and using for absentee voting um, 122 of those scanners. So I'm leasing an additional 10 scanners as backups for election day. Okay, so um, officers of election. So I am saying that we need 1,200 officers of elections to give us a buffer um, because individuals, and we had this occur during the June primary a couple of days before the election, someone decided they were having a party, I guess. They contracted COVID and um, could not work. And we actually had several instances of that. And since COVID is going to be around in November, we are planning to have some reserve officers to be able to deploy for that reason. On yesterday, um, the press release went out about the additional um, $100 incentive um, for officers of elections. We've had a tremendous response um, for that. So we've had over 300 interest forms submitted since yesterday. Um, we had already 700 confirmed officers and there were some additional ones that responded to the survey we sent out that just um, have not been entered yet. So uh, I have no concerns that we will not have enough officers of elections for election day. Um, Madam Chair, let me comment here if I may. This is Supervisor Jim Holland. I'm really pleased that the additional stipend was approved. Was that state or local? Because I heard it on radio TV last evening. That was county administration. Good. Chesterfield well, county I administration. applaud the administration <laughs> for following my recommendation that we do that, especially for this election. Uh, and so I'm really pleased to hear that news. Okay, and so um, let's talk about ballots a little bit. So I am going to order 160% um, ballots for the our registered voters. And I am putting aside 60% of those for absentee voting. And the reason for that is that to date, we already ha are at 11% of ballots just for male absentee voting. And we have we still have a backlog of applications we need to process and they come in every day. So we're already at 11%. So I'm expecting between male and in person that we may reach, um, I'll get very close to that 60% that number. Let's see. So with the male absentee voting, 
we will start pre-processing ballots on October the 5th, the mail absentee ballots. And what that means is that we open the ballots just like it was election day in our central absentee precinct, um, but it happens prior to election day. We open um, the ballots, we um, check the envelopes, certify that everything's okay, check them into the poll book and actually insert the ballots into the scanner. Now, the polls are not closed on the scanner until election day, but we do the prep work ahead of time so that on election day, we will not have as many ballots to try to process. Um, the requirement for that, and I've sent the information out to the party chairs already to notify them of the date, is that um, we have present at all times during pre-processing one officer of each political party, so one Republican and one Democrat, um, the entire time that we are pre-processing ballots. So, let's see. So absentee voting. Absentee voting and absentee voting is actually also being called early voting as I stated a little earlier. So absentee voting in person begins on September 18th. That is only in the registrar's office. So on September the 18th, the hours are 8.30 to 5, Monday through Friday. And then we're open the last two Saturdays before the election, October the 24th and October the 31st from 9 until 5. So that on September the 18th, the only place that individuals can show up to vote in person is in my office. Beginning October the 19th, the satellite locations, including the two that will be approved on tonight, will open. The hours of operation are from 10 a.m. until 8 p.m., Monday through Friday. And then on Saturday, October 24th and October 31st, same as my office, the hours are from 9 until 5. Voters can vote absentee in person or early at the registrar's office in any satellite voting location when they're open. They can also drop off any ballot that they received in the mail that they marked and voted at the registrar's office in any satellite location. So the um, Department of Elections has approved, I sent in a checklist, and they have approved all four satellite locations. So we're, we're good to go with that. Um, I've been working with um, Barry Condry and others in IST, and so we have to have new poll books for the satellite locations because each location needs to be able to communicate um, with the other. So if a voter shows up at the Metadale Library, they won't be able to come to my office later and vote because in, when they're checked in at Metadale, they will also be checked in um, at my office. So it's all real time. It happens. It's cloud technology. It's only allowed for um, absentee voting. It is not allowed on election day. So there is no communication on election day only during absentee voting periods. Okay, so what's happening now, so there are still some things in the General Assembly um, that have not been signed by the governor yet. And one of those things is that if we receive a mail absentee ballot from a voter, we have to open each one of these. We have to um, look inside to see if they completed the envelope properly. If there is an error, we have three days to notify the voter of that error and allow them to resolve it. So that's new. That would be an addition for this election um, if the governor signs this bill. In addition to that, the um, bill also includes information about drop-off locations and where they can be. Satellite um, locations have to be a drop-off location. The registrar's office has to be a drop-off location. And they've even added that polling places are a drop-off location for voted um, mail ballots on election day. So those ballots will then have to come back to the registrar's office on election night 
to be counted. They will be included with the late ballots because we will still close the polls on the central absentee precinct, our CAP precinct on election night and report those numbers. And then we will have a separate CAP central absentee precinct that will count the late ballots that come in throughout the week and the late ballots that, well, the ballots that come from the polling places on election night. The third thing that um, is in the bill is, of course, prepaid postage. And so we're still working through that. We're still waiting for um, instructions or directions. Um, I'm, I'm going ahead. The electoral board has um, voted that we go ahead and pay for postage um, for this election because we just we just can't wait um, for the state to decide what they're going to do and then at the last minute try to figure out how we're going to get postage on return envelopes. All the ballots, all the requests that we have in house have to be in the mail by Friday, September the 18th. Um, the state of Virginia is under a court decree um, from the federal government that requires that within 45 days of the election that all ballots have to be in the mail, especially any military and overseas um, ballots. And, and so one of the other concerns um, from one of the citizens is information um, about voting, information about how they can vote, dates and times. The um, communications and media and I have been working on a media plan weekly. Um, we have things that will be going out to the public. They've timed it strategically. Of course, um, officer of election recruitment was the first thing. Absentee voting will be next. And then you will begin to see things about um, dates and times, deadlines, election day voting, and different details as we have them will be released to the public. So there is a plan in place to um, keep the public informed, to keep the public engaged, keep the public abreast of what's going on all the way up to um, that week um, before election day. And of course, on election day will be reminders that today is election day. And I believe that concludes my comments.